All right, now to next week. It is living and dining room week, people. So you better get to it. See ya. On the surface, living and dining room week seems easy. A bit of chip rock, table and chairs, and a thumping great TV. Good luck. Simple. Good luck. Thank you. Ah, but there's more to it than that. This is the first room a buyer sees when they walk in the door. The lounge room is the first room they see, even before the kitchen. Yeah, I already said that, mate. Try and keep up. That first impression really becomes important. You see, come auction day, this is where the bidding happens. Blow them away, and the buyer will want it that much more. If they get this room right, they could take out the block. It is so No pressure. After a week full of highs, for St. Jenna. Sun a week full of lows. There's another night in the hospital last night. Issues with their room. Why do we have a stupid design? Too big of a space. And wrestling with choices that could walk the fine line between wow... Well Designer on washing lines, brother. ...and worthless. He's a bit cute, isn't he? And look at the gold I've come up with. Tonight, it all comes to a head. Time to reap what they've sown. The lounge room is the first room they've seen. In Neil's words... It doesn't feel like a luxury apartment. No, it doesn't. Get over it. <laughs> it's the day before living and dining room reveal, and the block is sleeping under a blanket of surprising calm. In apartment five, Darren is still trying to get his work and sleep ratio under control. It took me 15 minutes, so 10 minutes to spray and then five minutes to roll the ceiling. And I went to bed, set the alarm for two hours and got up and did, it, did that three times. So uh, it's quick, but just the time is, is masking everything up so the paint doesn't get everywhere. It's still better than rolling on night, absolutely. But I'm glad that I've got this done now and... We can um, now move on to the walls. Yep, there's still a lot to do. And in apartment two, Chris and Ronnie, their plasterer, are up early attacking the walls after another late night. It's been a massive week. Late nights and early starts. Be glad to get out of this one. Compared to everyone else, or most of the others, it's just, the room's huge. As their bank balance continues its march towards zero, Chris needs to save money on labour, which means a lot more pitching in. Yeah, Chris helping this week has um, yeah, helped him save money. But you only save money if you're there pitching in. Yeah, it cuts out a bit of labour. And, uh, yeah, no, he's done well. Getting the contestants motivated at this stage of the game is tricky. So much so that over in apartment four, the boys' builder Moz has taken matters into his own hands. Excuse me, master. Hello. Did you order some chai? I would like uh, some chai, please. Chai, I have chai for you, master. Thank you. Here you go. You can just tell Ashley you've got a chai latte. Say hello, Ash. Hi. Hi, Ash. Can you get him out of bed? I need, I need him to start cleaning. We've got a heap of cleaning to do. Just brushing his teeth, Ash. Just doing my job. Doing my job. It's all right. <laughs> Bye. Be happy. Beautiful day today. Plenty of work downstairs. Got a room to finish. Bye tomorrow. Still cleaning. Next door in apartment one, Michael is out of his toasty bed. It's freezing. It's with this state. And seems pretty relaxed about the day ahead. You are in a very good position. Tell you, mate. Hmm? If you want to come around at 5 o'clock this afternoon, we're going to put a movie on. Have a beer? Yeah, have a beer, watch a movie. 
I've heard that before, and it hasn't happened. Oh, yeah. Floor's done? Yeah, floor's down. Furnish it? Yeah, clean up, and then we're out. Plenty of books? Yeah, we've got plenty of books. I can't see encyclopedias over there. Don't worry. <laughs> well, the encyclopedias were the one thing that I went down the shop to get. The one time I've gone shopping on the block ever. Yep. And it's wrong. Why is that? I don't know. Apparently, it's naff. I don't even know what naff means. What does naff mean? I've got no idea. Must be like a designer term. Yeah. Fish. Michael is very close. In fact, the Urban Dictionary defines naff as uncool, tacky, unfashionable, or worthless. <laughs> oh, well, good luck, mate, and hopefully right. I'm back here this summer having a beer with you. Yep, yeah, I'll see you then. See ya. But Michael's 5 p.m. fantasy is looking shaky for two reasons. I think we all know Michael's deadlines are unrealistic, so we know it's worth the He'll be sitting on the couch for not working. Once construction's done, I'm out. Maybe. But the second obstacle to Michael's 5 p.m. couch fantasy is a possible lack of couch. I'm re reconsidering my sofa. Just a bit, bit nervous about the colour. Um, so I'm going back to the store today. Um, it's on its way here anyway, but... I don't know. I need to look at other options because it might, might be too light. It's my question. Next door, Chris has finally joined Ronnie and is keen not to waste another minute. By the end of this, I'm going to be, what, you reckon, what point? I'll be a plasterer. I'll be a plasterer? Well. <laughs> yeah, he's going well. I can go home now. That's how we do it, mate. Old school. No, there's gun stuff. In apartment four, Shannon's found another secret weapon to hang his judging hopes on. We have a big artwork gun up on this wall. It's a custom job, and he's 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 got he's set up upstairs, sort of painting away with everything that he does. And he, yeah, he does it all on site. Paints all the panels, and then we'll install it for him. It looks hot. And the brothers aren't the only ones banking on some big pieces to wow the judges. Over in apartment five, Darren and Dee's David Bromley painting is showing up. Beautiful. Gorgeous. And there's a bit of brown in it. Did you see that? So it's going to work in with everything. It looks even better in this smaller space. It's just got more impact. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I love her. Over in apartment three, Carson is also loving his artwork from Thierry B. Et voila. Ta-da! Yep, we're all very cultured here on uh, the block. I take a picture. Heaps culture. It all depends in French. En français, voila. And that reminds me, yesterday someone signed their name on Keith's door. Someone has actually tried to glue my door shut so I can't be productive today. But it hasn't worked. The glue hasn't dried. I would say it's the worst case of sabotage ever. But I'm going to find out who did it. I've got a pretty good idea who that is. Are you admitting to actually nailing, gluing my door? I am guilty unless proven. Damn it! So what? What's what? What are the repercussions? You'll find out. And as I always say, revenge is a dish best served cold in a demountable toilet. Now, mate, I've um. I've got a bucket full of uh, water with disinfectant in it. And I think it's time you practiced cleaning our lovely toilet block. <laughs> I don't have time for this, kid. I don't have time to uh, fix my door either. So you can go in there <laughs> and start cleaning that toilet block. Right. I want it done perfectly. Oh, well, this will teach me. It will teach you. Oh, Keith, don't you want to help me? No, I don't want to help you. Um, it doesn't look like much fun at all, actually, mate. So I'll leave you be for a little while. Thank you. Love you. Absolutely beautiful. than 24 hours to go until the living and dining room reveal. But the blockhead seems strangely calm. Do you guys have built it out at all? 
I think we put it on there and see how it looks. And then if it looks like it needs to come out, then we've... All we've got to do is unscrew the brackets. I can't believe it. Normally, it's frantic at this stage, but a day out from reveal, everyone's just relaxed. Carpet's going in. Touch-ups. Electrical. TV unit, TV. Lounges. Hopefully we're done and we can go out for dinner and chill out. That's going OK. I think once I get um, this on, I've got to then just sort of get the no more gaps out and the putty and everything and cover up all the holes and then really there this afternoon is all about painting. Great plan, Darren. But here comes Dee to throw a little custom-made spanner into the works. Well, I just decided that once we'd seen it all painted that it would be better to have something, some cabinetry built in in that corner rather than trying to find something that fits. Within minutes, Dee's found a local cabinet maker who pops up like a jack-in-the-box. Just something like that. And floating. It'll be a really simple cabinet. He's um, so he's he's not worried. He thinks it'll be fine. He'll install it later on today. Well, that's another job taken care of. And back in number one, Mike's gone from confident to cocky. It's all working in with my dream of sitting down at five o'clock. I'm even tempted to move it forward to four o'clock. You ready? Watch me stand on a cord and drop it. <laughs> You'll feel it. Nah, someone's on. Oh, no, my side's on. It's beautiful. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> Everyone's obviously confident they're going to uh, reveal a great room, but we'll have to wait and see. With all the kids under control, Keith decides to pop down to the block shop for a week soy latte. Good morning, Nat. Good morning, Keith. How are you? Good. Can I please have my coffee, a nice latte, please? Yeah. But you get the feeling he might have forgotten something. Anyone? Okay. Well, we'll clean the toilets. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of will. Thank you very much, Matt. Keith, he thought he'd get me back, but he doesn't know he's messing with the Boss Brothers. We're a pack. We're like a wolf pack. I reckon the look on uh, Keithy's face would have been priceless. We'll think of something good that he can't get out of. I'll take my time. I'll plan it to precise precision. <laughs> and that's precise. Or to military precision. Damn it! Precise precision. Oh, I love it. It's time to vote in Nine Jump In's Viewers' Choice Competition. Grab your favourite device and tell us who you think has this week's best room. Thanks to Nine Jump In, you could win 25 grand towards your own home reno. I'll have an update later in the show. Well, four hours to go. I simply can't see myself sitting on the couch having a beer. Not going to happen. Keith's dream of a five o'clock frothy with Michael is looking a bit flat. 
Maybe he should head over to apartment five. Yeah, the good guys, um, in-store team are here putting our TV bracket on the TV and we're going to mount it on the wall for us. So, you know, maybe we might be able to watch some, some footy tonight painting. So, it'd be crazy to think the TV be powered up before reveal. Nice. It is nice. And over in apartment three, Max and Carson have just installed a big, shiny flat screen too. Theirs is a mirror. Yeah, that way the shadow, yeah, it's the same the whole way around at the top. In the bottom, we can just sort of cover up whatever. So um, the entryway is right next to the living and dining, and it's a huge space. So we thought we'd throw in a nib wall just to sort of make the entry feel like an entry, and then it slowly opens up. We've also put this mirror on, so it doesn't feel like you're too enclosed when you walk in, but it gives a little bit of something different as well. Yeah, looking good. And out the front door, it's like, you know, you don't have to stop in at the bathroom now. The girls can walk through, the guys can walk through, check their hair. No need to check, mate. Your hair's perfect. Meanwhile, Carlene's across town buying a used car. Well, that's the only one in Melbourne. I mean, a couch. What price would I be looking at? Yeah. I've got a green ottoman and I have grey cabinetry. So I'm thinking I need more of a charcoal coloured sofa. And I have to get it today. It's life on the block. Everything's last minute. I think I'll go the charcoal in that configuration. It's another risk. I don't know. Until it all comes together, I'm going to have no idea if this is all going to work. But if you think that's a risk, try this on for size. It's just 20 hours to go until living and dining room reveal. And in apartment two, Chris and Jenna are only now putting on their first coat of paint. And to make matters worse... Hello, Jen. Hello, Keithy. The foreman has spotted a big mistake. This little area here. Yeah. Now, you're about to hang a very heavy TV off that. Yeah. Now, is that fly? No, that's fire check. That's fire check. So what's going to happen? The TV's going to fall down. So we need to have a bit of ply installed just in the back there. And then mount your TV onto that piece of ply. It's starting to be the bearer of bad news. Yep. But we can't have a TV fall off the wall because would... it can really hurt someone, maybe even kill someone. Yeah, or worse, break their TV. I don't want that. Don't want that. I'll put ply on it. Thank you. No worries. Someone could potentially die. The TV could fall off and it could hit someone in the head. So we don't want that. What we need to do is put ply, um, screw it into the studs. Um, so it's an easy fix. No worries. We'll see that. Um, we just want to make sure we're doing everything right. Everything needs to be done right and quickly. Are you hitting anything at all? Nothing. If you get a bit... You get a six my drill bit, you go through there, 100 bucks, edge of hit concrete. 100 bucks. Hey! Hey, boys. How about less talk, more action? I've got to put heaps of glue, and then they cut them out and put a noggin there, and oh there. Oh, my God! Less than a day to go, Jenna doesn't want to watch three blokes take 20 minutes to discuss a one-minute job. Group meeting. She was worried, and I was like, no, nah, babe, it's all right. We already knew what we had to do, like. <laughs> so we've got till 8 o'clock. Um, it's time. Two? It's about, no, it's... Um, 3.30. 3.30. Downstairs, Carsten's managed to drag himself away from his mirror. Of course, there's a familiar face outside. It's ex-block contestant Matt, who's arrived with a spectacular piece of furniture. Um, yeah, we spent the last 48 hours pretty much straight making a, a stainless steel leg, concrete, polished concrete top in a dark grey. They've got a dark grey stone floor, I think, polished concrete floor, so Max wanted something dark grey to go with it that's quite modern. The table weighs, it'd have to weigh about 180 kilos. But they've got a problem. Some goose has left the hoist full and on the first floor. Is that all yours, Carsten? Yeah, I think it's mine. The table weighs a bit under 200 kilos. And without a hoist, there'd be no way of getting it up. Over in apartment one, Mike's oversized painting is giving him similar trouble. It's big. It's just... Like, if that was smaller, I'd, but it's not. It's pretty big. Yeah, I just, you know... How long till you get back? How long? Yeah. Ten, why? I really need you back here to help me get it up. Five, Dee is overseeing the hanging of her lights. That way a bit. 
So hang on, let's just arrange this correctly. They're an important feature of the room and Dee knows exactly where she wants them. Ant, yours needs to come down slightly. And I think your left hand one um, goes out a bit, yeah. Up a little bit. Hang on, stop. Move out the way, Ant. Let go. Bit more. Up a bit more. Up, 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 up. This one sits here. The middle one's got to come up a bit more. Stop, stop. Perfection. Well done, boys. Spot on every time, you guys. I can't believe it. day before reveal is winding up but there's still a lot to do in apartment one michael's 5 p.m tv and hot cocoa deadline has come and gone you've got heaps to do so it turns out i'm not as far ahead as i thought i might have been at this point um i'm starting to um, get in the habit of overestimating time frames just like carleen said so once again carleen's right hopefully next time you can actually finish on time and then we can sit down and just have a beer all right Thanks, Keith. Hey, hey. Sounds good. But um, I'll be I'll be sitting here watching a movie by eight. So. Oh, it's been such a calm day, and then everything just goes boom at once. All clear. Going through. One in the world. Beautiful. And the table's not the only custom-made piece they're wanting to bowl the judges over with. We've got some custom-made lights for this week and they're absolutely beautiful. You know, we've got a local artist. Um, I think it's a nice thing to do and whoever purchases the apartment, I mean, it's a nice story behind it too. But custom-made also means custom install. So Nathan from Blacklist is coming to do a big installation for us. Um, it's 15 boards, all of at about a metre square, so it's, it's a huge art piece. The end result is going to look amazing, but it's going to take a couple of hours to line everything up. You know, each board's got to be square, and you want neat lines around everything. And, you know, we're, we are the masters of detail, so we want everything to be perfect. So we're going to take our time and make sure it's a perfect job. Also taking their time is apartment two's Chris and Jenna who think they're on track. We're on track. Are you sure? I'm not so sure. Yeah, we're on the wrong track. I, I planned this all along. Tonight, we have to finish the cabinetry, we have to paint, we have to grout, we have to finish the skirting, the electrical needs to finish, um, doors to be put on, the TV, the fireplace, and styling, which is easy. away, this should be the scene of madness. People running around aimlessly, screaming, crying and hysterical. You should go get a massage. Mm. Apartment one didn't burn the candle at both ends last night, but they are burning the candle this morning. Apartment three are on top of it. So on top of it, that while Max puts her feet up, Garston pitches in to help Darren and Dean. And apartment four are in high spirits too. With the final panels going up, Shannon trying to work out their clothesline. It's not all calm and collected. The race to the finish this week is reserved exclusively for Chris and Jenna in apartment two. Um, no, I haven't slept. <clears throat> no, I haven't slept. Um, just wanted to keep going, so 
there wasn't a rush at the end, so there's just waiting for my table. It's coming in at seven. Still gonna put skirting boards. Uh, I'm gonna put a couple of shelves. Gonna tidy up. A couple of um, touch, like some touch ups. Gonna put a door on. And I think that's it. It looks really heavy. So good. How you going, Jay? You had any sleep? No. None at all? No. Not one second? Not one second. Good luck. You'll get there. Thank you. You gonna make it? Yeah. You sure? 20 minutes? Yeah. 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 Floor? Yeah. Yeah, Easy. I've got mops on my feet. I'm mopping right now. You guys, come on, hurry up. Oh, like used to go. And things to be found. Five minutes to go, Jen. Yep. Then hurry up. I am. How are you going? Another week down, another room done. Well, two rooms actually, living and dining. So the blockheads make their way to my HQ while their rooms are inspected by our expert judges. Shelling houses Australia's Shana Blaze, interior designer extraordinaire Darren Palmer, and editor in chief of Bell magazine Neil Whittaker. Hey Scotty. That's art. Hello. Hey Scotty. Boys. On the way to HQ, I was hoping to hear um, three perfect tens. You've done a perfect job, boys. Well Have done. the rest of the week off. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You all look a bit tired and battle torn. Have you had a big week? Yes. Yes. Right, big week. I gotta say, walking around your living dining rooms today, it's hard to believe that you were living under desks in that area just a few weeks ago. Yes. The mammoth task I set you in this competition is starting to come together. Those dingy little offices have now been transformed into stunning homes. You've all done a great job. You must be proud of yourselves. Yeah. Very, yes? Very, 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 yep. They look terrific. Yep. You now have just two rooms left. Your en-suites and your exteriors. Then it will be all complete. The question is, who can afford to finish their en suites <laughs> and terraces? Well, I have just exactly what you're after. A $10,000 helping hand from our mates at AMP, and that, of course, is going to today's winner. And I'm guessing it's never been more important to any of you to take home the cash tonight. Yes? Yeah. Yep. All right, let's find out what the judges had to say, the old feedback. All right, Max and Carson. We've been really consistent, I suppose, with all our rooms with that clean, sleek, modern feel, but because it is the living and dining, we did want to make sure that the room felt warm this week. Um, I think that the judges will like the colours that we've used this week and how we've tied everything into the artwork really well. I hope so. I'm hoping they'll like the recent carpet. I think they will. We love it. That's all we can really yeah. base it off at the moment, I guess, and then we'll have to wait and see what the judges think. Your living dining space got a little squeal of delight from Darren when he first walked in. Ooh! Yay! 
<laughs> Darren. <laughs> All three judges were lost for words at first. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Then they all said that they love the light. Those, those lights or the light coming in here? A, a the bit of light. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. No, I do love those pendant lights. I think they're amazing. You walk in through the front door and to know that your energy straight away goes to that light and not something bad, that's good. Mm. It's all about the light coming through those windows though, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. totally. The, the, the backdrop through here and the view that's been obscured by these drapes. We were lucky enough to have picked apartment three, so we have a lot of windows, northern facing. We had a winner there, mm. um, but it was just a matter of how we utilised it and, you know, softened the light. It makes it look gentle and it casts the light really beautifully through here on the floor. Look at all that. Look at all the shadowing through here. Amazing. I absolutely love the sophisticated palette that they've used in here. This room immediately feels like it's got a sense of glamour, very restrained glamour, but it feels luxurious as well. It's got a softness to it, yeah. and this has ample natural light, and they've used all light colours to capitalise on mm. that, and it actually makes you feel quite relaxed. Yep. Mm. This detail here on the floor with the carpet set into mm. the, the concrete is so elegant. Oh, oh. my gosh, yeah. <laughs> you were worried about that? Yeah, it was a big decision. It gives you this lovely break from all the warmth and all the mm -hmm. sort of movement in this concrete to what you really want under your feet in, in a living space is something soft. Which is this. Yeah. It feels mm. terrific. This okay. is very unique. It's unique and you can change the carpet as often as you want. Yeah, so it ended up being... Cost effective and... Cost effective yeah. and it looks cool. Neil reveled in the feeling of sophisticated glamour you have created, saying the spaces feel expensive. Yep. Yeah, I agree. It feels upmarket. It feels like they've used the best of everything. They probably haven't. It looks as though you have used the most expensive of everything in your living and dining rooms, even though he knows you can't possibly have done so on your budget. I'm just looking around, trying to find something that I don't like, and <laughs> I can't do it exactly what we wanted to hear that's such a big space and i think to hear that you know it all works together now great it's really well done even just that yeah. simple bulb just hanging over yeah. there over that side table i think that's elegant it's gorgeous oh dear judges if you want to see some magic press movie on hug Max <laughs> oh they are so into their signs aren't they <laughs> oh okay oh yeah, right, that's magic. Yep, that's good. I do like a bit of home automation. See, that just compounds the sense of luxury to yes. me. Uh, and it's turned on the TV, so that's automatic. It's, it does this, turns the TV on, that's great. So, movie off. There you and go. all the lights come back on. Wow. The dining table was another star. And is that concrete? I want to it see it. Like yeah, because it. <laughs> it's looking like concrete. It looks kind of like zinc. The judges loved its solid, stylish construction. Hadn't ever seen anything quite like it. Now, that was sky-high rendering. Was that Maddie? Yeah. That's Maddie, yeah. This is unbelievable. Beautiful. So this is like a render concrete. Yeah. Custom-made. This is stunning. Darren was also very impressed. He reckons the spaces feel balanced, spacious and airy. And zoned perfectly. In setting the carpet into the floor like this, and this big light, and that demarcates this zone. Yep. That demarcates this zone and it's very clear. Yep. And that is good design. He said that although you have struggled to achieve a feeling of warmth and homeliness in some previous weeks, this week you nailed it. We nailed it. Everywhere they looked, there were things they liked. It should come across as clinical, yes. but it's not. Beauty, warmth, texture. It's actually warm, it's soft, it's modern. Light, art. It's just good. It's warm. Balance. Yep. All done just right. Perfect. So, well finished, virtually faultless couple of spaces. 
with an appeal to a broad buyer market. Well done. That's it. Uh, we could have gone down the road of making it how our house is, but we're not buying it. You know, we can't afford it. 25 <laughs> and 27 year old don't have two mil to go throwing around an apartment like this. So we thought, why not maybe go out of our comfort zone a little? And it sounds like it's working. It's reveal day of living and dining room week. Next up for judging is Shannon and Simon in apartment four. The design of the room and the theme of the room flows on from everything upstairs, like timber, natural sort of product, and charcoals with splashes of colour. I guess the, the first thing you notice as well is the Tasmanian oak mm. on the back wall and the little nib ball in front of it. Shannon and Simon. No, I never thought coming on the block that it would be actually this hard. Um, the TV portrays it out as being pretty tough, but it's still nothing like that. It's just about ten times harder. Yeah, it's very hard. But we're holding up. It's easy, really. It's all walk in the park. Walk in a dangerous park full of pit bulls and bindies. And you don't have said it last week and they said it again today the floor is absolutely stunning it is gorgeous i love all the expansion joints in here i love that it's it's got this detail i love the color yeah it feels really expensive too it this would floor. Have cost a fortune but the judges think it was worth the price because they believe buyers will pay handsomely for it. I mean, the impression it makes the minute you walk in the front door, I think it, it just puts this apartment into, into a different league. The sideboard was described by all as outstanding, a real quality bit of kit. They won that on the challenge, and it's so divine. Australian made. Australian made. That is gorgeous. beautiful. It is a absolute standout. It is. But this whole vignette here is yep. just beautiful. The artwork is amazing. It's just very, very nicely done. Well, it's beautifully balanced, and it's very sophisticated in the way it's been put together. Yeah. And sophisticated in its simplicity. Yeah. And the boys have always been about the architectural envelope, too. Look how they've boxed that vent in. Yeah and centre the light for the artwork straight over there. That's really clever. Very sophisticated and well resolved. Good. On the other side, however... I was always wondering what they were going to do under the stairs. And they did that. It's a naughty corner. That's what we said. <laughs> right. Stay there, naughty boy. It feels weird in here. They would have been better well. off putting some basic sculpture with a piece of art. Um, or don't put anything there at all. So they've chosen a chair. I mean, that's that's obviously a very iconic chair. Maybe they're treating it as a sculptural piece, yes, yep. but it's still weird. The judges also wondered about the visual impact of the nib wall. Yeah, I can understand why they did that, so you don't look straight through. You've got a bit of privacy when you walk in, but to me, that is a beautiful wall, and you don't need that there and that there. They just... There's nothing ugly to hide. No. Yeah. Personally, I think it's needed. Just to, just to break up the space a bit. And into your dining room and lounge, the judges became divided on a few other points also. I mean, there are things about it, like the floor, for example, that are extremely high-end. But then I look around at some of the other things in the room, and I feel that it, it's, it's quite budget. It feels quite low budget. I don't particularly like the art, I must oh, admit. Really? I don't. So, so Neil wasn't sold on the artwork? That's all right, I'm not trying to sell it to Neil. Neil's got his own house. I'm trying to sell it to um, someone else. <laughs> but he was howled down by Darren and Shana, who completely disagreed. They thought the artwork was terrific. I just, I love it. I think to have something made at a low cost with that much impact that wouldn't have cost the earth is really clever. And Darren in particular is quite moved by the message on one of the panels. That is just... 
the most beautiful, heartfelt thing. I think that's absolutely beautiful. I'm not disagreeing with you. The idea is clever. I just don't particularly like that art. And for me, that jars with the absolute sophistication of the rest of the apartment. I mean, last week when we judged the kitchens, I walked into that kitchen and I was blown away mm. because it felt so sophisticated and so appropriate and so luxe and so glamorous. This jars. We sort of had to put a few cuts in our budget this week to, to be able to afford to build an ensuite. Because we'd rather a, um, a poorly furnished living room and an ensuite yeah, yeah, yeah. than a, a kick-ass living room and no ensuite. No ensuite. So they're holding money back? Well, they certainly didn't spend money uh, on getting a big rug because no. this is absolutely the wrong size. As soon as I put that rug down this morning, I knew that it needed to be bigger. Couldn't afford a bigger one? No. The rug is a real downfall because a rug defines an area, it defines the shape, the size. They've got this oversized rug by the dining table, but they've got this measly one by there, and it's obvious because they're side by side. Yeah. It's coming down towards the pointy end of the, the, the business now, you know, like... Um, no one likes the pointy edges. What I don't understand is the artwork on the wall over there. Like over here? Those poles. Uh, they move. Oh, I've seen them. They are... Oh, God. That's a clothesline. A clothesline? In your living room? I don't want to walk in and see a clothesline. It sounds bad now. <laughs> it sounded great this morning. They all agreed that the best things about your room, the flooring, the feature wall, the entry, the stairs, are the very things you needed to get just right and will pay off on auction. But today, the judges didn't feel the same sense of welcome they felt in some other apartments. So I think the biggest thing we can take away from the judges' comments is that the judges are really impressed by the architectural layout of the room, yeah. and that's something that can't be changed, you know? So we've got, the, we've got to change the size of the rug, yep. just the TV cabinet, the and, chair. and just take the naughty chair out, and maybe the clotheslines, which is all easy. I can do that tonight if you want me to do that. You're going to do that tonight? No, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Jenna and Chris. Babe. Babe. <laughs> I think we have a chance this week on, on winning our room. I think we delivered a, a very stylish room. As the judges walked through your front door, they all commented on what a nice little entry it was. a nice little entry? Yeah, it is, actually. And initially, they were pleased to see that you had included a study nook. Do you want to see it when you first walk in the door, though? Probably not. We're going to go in there definitely hopeful and confident and um, just see what comes out. in the door from a hard day at work, the last thing you want to look at is another desk. <clears throat> when you come in, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Get over it. <laughs> As Darren said, when you walk in the door from a hard day at work, the last thing you want to look at is another desk. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just one of those, those yeah. jarring messages. Yeah. You walk through the door and you're like, right, OK. Yeah. Let's pay some bills. Just because Darren thinks when he walks through the door, is he buying our apartment? No. Somebody else is. So, you know, when he says when you walk through the door and you don't, you know, after a hard day's work, you don't want to see a study, that's fine. Walk straight past it up to our bar. You don't even have to stop by our study. It's just like... I just... Yeah, I don't know. Just... Stupid. 
And unfortunately, your eye is also drawn to how badly finished the paintwork That's is up there, you too. That's the nail on the head. I, and I'm, I'm bugged by how dirty this place is. I, it bugs me. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's a job site. Yes, it's chaos outside. I get it. I get it. I get it all. But mm. that, being dressed like that and not white first, it makes me sad for them. It makes me nervous for them. I, I have all the compassion in the world. I get it. Mm. It's a big thing to do this amount of space in that amount of time with that amount of money. I get it. But it's still not good enough. Yeah. Shona also wondered what the point of the low-level shelf was. It's a case of, like, why? She found it random and suggests she remove it. I don't get yeah. what that's for, no. other than to, like, polish your shoes or something. I, I don't know. I don't get that. So they weren't that happy with your study. But things did improve as they looked over your dining room. OK, let's, let's start with yeah. some good. Uh, that table is amazing. The table is divine. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the timber. Stunning, divine and beautiful how they described your dining table. It's a compliment. Yeah. But they suggested that with a table this grand, then your light feature should match its grandeur. I have nothing against those light fittings. I think they're lovely, but I just think it feels miserly. Mm. It just feels really tiny. Shane also suggested finding some chairs that actually fit under the table. You know that one? I love the table, but you've got to be that really would annoy careful. Me. Yeah, you've got to pick the chairs that go yeah. with the table. Moving into your living room, the judges like the lamp, the couch, and chair. But unfortunately, they didn't feel that collectively it all came together as well as it should have. They've gone to the effort of putting in a fireplace, mm. but mm. it's just not. Grand. It's not the, the central point of a room. The central point of the room is the TV. And you know what? That frustrates me like no end. OK, and we, we all work on TV. Yeah. We all love TV. But, but there are ways to do TVs exactly. that don't stare at you. I had this conversation with them during the week in the competition. Mm. They had the Australian made competition and they, they had a TV that wasn't Australian made and made it their focus. Fine, go against everything I say, but we're all feeling the same. In a word... It lacked a bit of soul. To judge us saying that, I don't think that's a good call. To say that to, to say that to anyone. There's no soul there. There's no spirit there. It's just, to me, items that have been put there to fill a space. If, if they want to comment stuff like that, they can say, you know, if it was cold, that's fine. You know, not don't... soul. Because soul. we've put our lives on hold and we're giving this 100%. The blind over the window is an odd choice. It, it feels like it's a projection screen that's coming down from the roof, and it's very unattractive. You know, there is a window there. Other apartments can see in. So if somebody wants some privacy, they're able to put down a blind. Um, if they don't like it, they can roll it back up. And I suppose they're thinking, well, this is grey, it's moody. It's like what they were trying to create in their master bedroom. It's all about creating that mood. It's got no mood at all. In Neil's words, it doesn't feel like it's the living room of a luxury apartment. No, it doesn't. That's basically what it boils yeah. down to for me. I mean, to be very honest with you, I feel like I'm standing in the display apartment of any development anywhere in Australia. Bingo. The judges really want you to think about your balancing of hard and soft surfaces. Because at the moment, your room feels clinical and uninviting. I don't want to sit on that couch. I don't want to sit on that chair. There is nothing in this room that is making me actually want to stay here. The judges hope you can still see this as constructive criticism. There's a difference between judging and just being rude. And yeah. they're just being rude. And they're just being rude. Oh, boy. OK. Shake it off. Yeah, shake it off. Rude. Shake that off. I don't know. They're very hard to impress. And they're... They're very hard to impress. So the room, we've just tried to carry through what we've been doing in all the other rooms, as we do every week. So we've got the herringbone floor that's fo followed through from the kitchen, which looks really gorgeous. Yeah, it looks amazing. And we've got that David Bromley painting that we love. It's warm. Like, we're just trying to create a warm space. Darren and T. Straight away, the judges were throwing around words like beautiful, 
Mm. Beautiful is the word for this room. I think it's pretty. And pretty. <laughs> Talking about us. Blackbirds mm. singing in the dead of night. We take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to arrive. The proportions feel good, you know, the, the tall doors and the long hanging lights. Yeah, I love them. George Nelson. Okay. Classic design. And they quickly agreed that the windows and the floor are the stars of the room. This, they said, is a nicely designed and finished couple of spaces, and they all admired yet again the consistency you've achieved throughout your apartment. There's beautiful styling going on there. There's beautiful styling there. There's a lot going on down here. Everybody. Oh, look oh. at that. <laughs> Oh. oh. Well, they're clearly they have fabulous taste. I didn't even notice you put it there. Neil thinks the parquetry floors you have used are one of the very best things he's seen in this whole competition. The floor, absolute winner. Yeah, that was nice feedback to hear. We love that look. So it was great to hear that he's, he loves it as well. You know, the, the choice of the dining table, the pendant lights, you know, there are some beautiful things in here. Um, but I think there was part of me that was expecting something more from the living and dining room. I absolutely loved their kitchen last week. I thought it was so beautifully executed. I don't know, I thought they were saving the big guns for living and dining. And I'm just a little bit underwhelmed. I'm not sure what he was expecting, to be honest. Yeah, we're, I mean, everybody's we're, um, got... two weeks out from finishing, we, he, they must know we've got no money left. <laughs> so what... Clearly, if you've got money... We've got a Jardin couch in there. You can put amazing things in there. And a French oak floor. I don't so I'm know really, I, I was baffled about. by that comment about what he was expecting to see. Shana, it's like they've said to themselves, oh, my God, we've only got a few weeks left and we've still got so many ideas. Let's put them all in the living and dining room and get them out of the way. <laughs> that, that's how it feels to me. How can we cram too much in when it's a living and dining room with a table and a couch? Yeah, I mean, I didn't feel like it was a cluttered space. We've got a smaller apartment than everyone else. The judges agreed that the sheer quantity of things to look at in there detracts for the impact of that hero David Bromley artwork. I mean, everything else is fighting with it. The animal skin on the lounge, they said, should go. Neil also felt that the sitting space beneath the staircase is overstyled and does not work at all. That space under the stairs, I didn't know what to do with that. I don't believe you would ever use that. In his words, no one is ever going to sit there. Well, he's wrong, because I sat there. And I've sat there too, actually. And so we've only been, had it there for six hours so or that's something. That's two people. I find that area cluttered, overstyled. I want to remove half of the things there. Look, I think he's going to have to take it up with the architect. I didn't design the space, but I'm pretty sure that if I had have left that area bare, that they would have had a problem with that too. All three judges agreed that some selective editing in there will improve your apartment's appeal to buyers. Come auction time. It does feel beautiful in here though, and it feels expensive, and it feels well finished, and it feels well considered, and I think people will fall in love. People will come in and go, gosh, I love that panelling. I love yes. this herringbone. Yes. I love the way I feel in here. You would feel successful living in a home like this, mm. I think. Totally. It's an apartment full of very beautiful details. I, I agree with you there. I just worry this is the living space and you kind of go on your journey through the apartment and you see all those beautiful details. You walk into that amazing bathroom and you think, wow, and then that beautiful canopied bedroom. And, you know, there are so many wow moments in this apartment. And then you come here and you, you will walk in here and go, small, a bit tight. Yep. Exactly. Beautiful, yes. but small. I think that the apartment will still appeal to buyers and I think that I can easily change some of the things that are in there. And, you know, they've said all along that our apartment's going to have great appeal. So if suddenly they've changed based on that room, what can I say? <laughs> Four rooms down in living and dining room week. The final couple up for judgment is Michael and Carleen. So we didn't have a lot of um, trade costs this week, so we thought we'd spend that money on the cabinetry, and it's just come up unreal. 
it, it is a massive statement. And when you walk in the front door, that's the first thing you see. Yeah, I think we're going to be up there. Carl and Michael, the judges entered your apartment today in the dark. On purpose, you think? Uh-huh. Oh. Found your computer-controlled light switches and bang. Oh, okay, wow. Well. With the lights on, they're all blowing away. I saw the little table and the very sexy chair. That is hot, isn't it? I love that. That is beautiful. Sit in it and see how comfy it is. Oh, sit here, read my catcher in the rye. They had never seen a chair quite like it, but it suits your place perfectly. They're good at finding the little unusual pieces, aren't they? Mm. They've got a really, really good eye. Then they took in the giant bookcase. Many compliments for styling. How good is that? I'm just standing back going... Mm, taking it all in. Ooh. We really should have ordered those cabinets two weeks ago, at least, I reckon. Um, and for us to come up with it on, I think, yeah, day two or three of the week and then for them to turn it around that quickly, it, it, was, um, it was the impossible, so... Only on the block. And the block makes the impossible happen, definitely. Yeah. I think that's the first time I've seen bookcases like that properly styled. <laughs> In this series, or in this show, <laughs> actually, ever. ever. Yeah. Because one of one of my biggest moans usually is that they put bookcases in and then they never ever stock them properly. But you guys have got it exactly right. You know, I guess it's all op shop stuff, but they've colour coded them all really nicely and yeah. they've paid attention to the way that the sizes relate to each other. And Darren could tell it must have taken Michael hours. <laughs> I just threw that in. <laughs> <laughs> I knew who did it. Yeah. Should we go in? Because yeah, to me, I just yeah. can't wait to get in. We're talking about it. Shana was worried that your dining area was going to be hard to solve. But I think that matches that and you can add to it. To the end? Yeah. yeah and make course. it a bigger dining. They measured the small table and quickly worked out that it goes with the table. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. If you wanted to make a six-seater, if you're entertaining, that piece could be moved over from another wall. I think they've created a really homely environment in here. I mean, there are certain things that concern me slightly. Like um, what? I think the exposed brick wall is potentially going to polarise people. But Shana and Darren think it's perfect for the space. I actually think it might win over a lot of people. Do you because think? I do. I do. I think it adds a lot of warmth. But yeah, yeah see, that's, I actually feel the opposite about the wall. I, I think well, it's amazing. I hope you're right. There was much discussion about lighting today. Social. See, I, thought, I like that. But they all agreed that the crystal pendant was unnecessary. It just feels a bit blingy. And fights against the colour palette of the rest of the room. I would tell them to get rid of the light. It's not coming down. They think you should delete that. I don't want to delete it. <laughs> they should delete it. <laughs> Put some brass wall sconces as a replacement on the brick wall instead. Would have been amazing. Mm. That would have been fantastic. Yeah. I really like wall sponsors, but that brick wall was an existing wall. So Michael has the issue, how do you then cable to put the wall sponsors in? He'll absolutely love the rug. This is such a beautiful rug. Yeah. I absolutely love it. They thought the curved TV was very cool. Brand new technology, curving. But they think you might have mounted it a little too high. It's a personal thing. Mm. But for all the things they like throughout your room today, the bookshelf is definitely the hero piece. And I'm just imagining what those bookshelves are going to look like down the track when they're absolutely full of books. I think it's going to be like an incredible wall of, of life. I've got to say, it took them a long time for the judges to leave your room today. I, yeah. I think it's interesting that they've chosen such 70s plants in here. You know, like the, the garden through there yeah. is quite 70s palm yeah. and the banana palm is kind of yeah. 70s. Yeah. And I, I guess it's everything old is new again, you know. Yeah. The 70s have had a bad rap over the years and uh, people have started to talk about the 70s as if it was the decade that style forgot. It wasn't. Yeah. There was a lot of luxury and a lot of glamour. Mm. And it's interesting how a lot of 70s references are coming back into fashion now. Mm. What was your hair like in the 70s? 
abundant. <laughs> well done, apartment one. It's... No one gets that. <laughs> I was a water skier at SeaWorld. And when we came in at the end of our little act, we would have to give it to the audience and then take it back. <laughs> do we have to elaborate? Well, you're the one that did it. Just edit that out. <laughs> winner of the best room is about to be revealed but first who do you think has created the best living dining room head to nine jump in where you could win 25 grand just for voting here's an update tonight's winner in our viewers choice poll is simon and shannon let's head back to scotty at hq for the all important judges scores okay that's it scores here we go darren Michael and Carla. Jenna and Chris. Chris and Jenna got quite a bad rap. Yeah. Because we thought they did a really good job. It's not the score we were hoping for, and we don't feel that that's the score that we deserved. Action cast. We, if, even if the judges had given us negative comments, we, we, loved, it. we loved it. Yeah. yeah. Simon and Shannon. I thought we could have, you know, had a little bit of a high score. Give the boys a go. Give the boys a go. Down and dead. That freaked me out. I was really bewildered by the comments and then the scores. Some high scores there. We were surprised about all the comments Joe said about, about all the other contestants. Um, the stuff that we thought was impractical were apparently sexy. <laughs> all right, Shana. I just don't get the judges. Like, we've been trying to work them out for the last six, seven weeks. We don't think for one minute that our room was seven and seven and a half. So it's probably not fun for them anymore. Like, it's not fun when you get slammed. Uh, you know, come on, China, seriously. It's on record that I completely don't agree with the judging of our kitchen last week. And, you know, things like that make me think, you know, a nine from Shana for a great kitchen and then a nine for a room that, that they didn't think was successful. I think there's only half a point in it, isn't there? Yeah. OK, see you in a tick. One sec. Hang on there. Right. Our budget's quite tight too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all crap. <laughs> we honestly don't think our room's worth it, it. You know, it's worth more than seven points. Um, it feels like that they're judging us harsher than everyone else. Yeah. D got sounded like she got smashed, and they picked up nines. So, she even said that. She even said it as well. She's like, we're all confused. Like, yeah, I don't know. Okay, the winner of week seven, and hopefully I'm in neutral, <laughs> is. <laughs> The mum and dad from the Gold Coast have now taken out every room on level one, including this week's living and dining room. Just half a point behind, in second place is Max and Carsten. Third is Daz and Dee. Then the brothers Simon and Shannon. And in fifth place, Chris and Jenna. Here you go, congratulations, Michael and Carlin. If I'm not mistaken, is that the third win in a row for apartment one? We are on front. We are so happy. Um, our ensuite, which we have next, is only little, so it won't cost us much, but our terrace is massive. So this will allow us to finish with some dignity. You are coming home strong. 
plenty of cash. We need it. <laughs> Not as much as that. <laughs> <laughs> nice little helping hand from our mates at a &P. 10,000 bucks Thanks, going Scotty. into your accounts tomorrow. Right, now to next week. You'll be moving upstairs, finishing off your masters with your en suites. Then your apartment's inside will be complete. Wow. Unbelievable feeling that will be. All right. Best of luck. See you later. Well done, everybody. Thanks, Bye. Everybody. Bye. Carleen and Michael Stahl, of course, Neil's going to be falling in love with it. Every time he walks in, of course, his jaw's going to drop. Why? Because he sees that every page on his magazine. Like, we get that. And that's not our style. We can't pull off a Michael and Carleen. The only person we can pull off is a Jenna and Chris. And unfortunately, the judges aren't liking that. Next two weeks, we're going to focus on our end product. And we'll be focusing on auction day. That's the only way we're going to get through this. It's not about what three people say every week. Hang in there, guys. I'm sure you'll smash it when auction time comes. In the meantime, here's something to cheer you up. Got the giggles. <laughs> <sighs> this, uh, oh, this is. Uh, well. This... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Neil is probably the the one that is my Ayatollah Shamola in terms of what I'm listening to. You don't have to frown when I'm saying a comment either. If you don't agree with it, just nod your head, please. Oh, yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, the tight... Oh, you just laugh your ass off and I'm just going to be normal. So when I saw the nine... <laughs> this week on The Block, we've unearthed a disaster, I think, mate. My heart started going... Boom, 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 boom. Basically sitting on a bomb. If they have exploded, see you later, Block. Well, if we survive that catastrophe... Invoice you. I reveal the explosive results of the block order. Zero. What? Awkward.com.au forward slash even more awkward. This week, it's on sweet week, and the blockheads are under the pump. I'm on the edge of breaking. Makes me nervous. <laughs> We've got a, a serious issue. And he said, pull it up. Pull the screen up. Pull the screen up. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you. Pull this up. We won't push laughing. There's playbacks. That free. Someone's okay. Taking the chair from me is like suicide. And revenge that's very, very sweet. Can't seem to find my toilet anywhere. Oh my god, is someone still on our shower head? <laughs> In the race to the finish. Tony, you dropped that. The most intense moment. Don't break anything, Joe. <laughs> Five en suites get it going over. It's a mess. Yes. It's a mess. One doesn't make the grade. It's bad styling. Yeah, it's really bad. Oh, wow. Amazing. And others make the judges' day. That oh. is pretty special. Wow. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Oh, wow. I think people...